Well, welcome back to our class on the Proverbs, Words of Wisdom, as we've called it. And today we're going to be starting a new topic, uh, Education and the Fool. Um, this is a re-recorded class due to technical difficulties. We're having to go back and on a couple of these we're re-recording. Uh, so thank you for your patience as we've worked our way through this. Uh, but today as we begin this new study, uh, I think that you'll find it uh, very enlightening. And of course one of the uh, main characters, for lack of a better reference, of the Proverbs is the fool. And unfortunately we're not really going to get to him or her uh, today, although we'll touch on the full briefly, uh, today we're primarily going to focus on uh, what I have classified as education within the Proverbs or proverbial education. Let me pray for us and we'll get started. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank You for this day and for Your many rich blessings. We do thank You for Your Word and we thank You for the wisdom of the Proverbs. We pray that as we study this topic today that Your Holy Spirit would guide and direct us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we look to the Proverbs, and if you think about it from a historical standpoint, if the Proverbs were originally written by a teacher or by a king or by a Solomon per se, and written for young students, more than likely contextually young men in the teaching and training and wisdom, uh, and we look back at this, we can see that really the Proverbs are sort of couched in the topic, uh, the theme of education. Uh, but it's not necessarily what we would think of in a modern sense of education, at least not in the cultural education that we encounter most often. Uh, education, according to the Proverbs, is a gaining of knowledge a gaining of knowledge but it's a very specific knowledge isn't it uh, the proverb says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge uh, the idea of a, a right reverence a holy fear and respect for God begins our education begins our gaining of this knowledge how is it gained? Well, the second half of that verse says that fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, if wisdom is the application of that knowledge, instruction is the gaining of that knowledge. Uh, and so wisdom is gained primarily through instruction, beginning with the fear of the Lord. In other words, that the Scriptures teach us to fear the Lord, so also instruct us rightly in fearing the Lord and how to fear the Lord. And that's where knowledge begins. Well, what about this, this fool that we'll look at in coming studies? Well, what we know about the fool is that he or she hates knowledge and its benefits. Hates education, as I'm defining it, and its benefits. The fool despises wisdom and instruction. Well, we don't want to play the fool, do we? We don't want to be foolish. We want to begin our knowledge with a right fear of God and so gain by instruction and so also live in the wisdom that that gives us. And so let's start with just asking this general question. How is education gained? How are we educated? And again, by educated, we're meaning the type of education that is referenced and defined within the Proverbs. How are we educated? Well, Proverbs chapter 2, starting in verse 4, says, If you seek it like silver, and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. Now there's a lot there, and, and we're not going to look at all of, of that, those three verses, uh, but, but in general, what we can glean from that is that one of the ways that we're educated is through pursuing knowledge. 
pursuing knowledge. It is an active process. It's not something that we're born with. It's not something that we glean uh, by virtue of association, but rather knowledge is, godly knowledge is pursued. We are to be an active participant in it. So also, Proverbs 18.15 says, an intelligent heart, note that, the personification of the heart, an intelligent heart, the inner man, the inner being, our inner being, acquires knowledge. The idea of purchasing acquires knowledge or gains knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. In general, what I'm taking from that, uh, chapter 18, verse 15, is that we are to be a learner. We are to be a learner. We're to pursue knowledge, but we're also to be a learner. And the distinction that I want to emphasize there is that sometimes we can have a tendency to push back against knowledge that we could receive. Or we can have a closed mind to gaining additional knowledge. And and part of what the Proverbs teaches us is that we are to have an open heart and an open mind to receive what God has to teach us. And we are to readily receive it as He conveys it to us in His Word. Word. Proverbs 15, 14 says, The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed on folly. Again, the idea there is that uh, we are to be a learner. We are to be one who seeks after, who pursues knowledge, and we are to uh, be one who is readily accepting of what God is teaching. Proverbs 21.11 says, When a scoffer is punished, the simple becomes wise. When a wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. And of course, we want to be that wise man or that wise woman who when we are instructed, we are a learner, and so we gain the knowledge that is given by instruction. Number three, Proverbs 8.33 says, Hear instruction and be wise. And do not neglect it. And Proverbs 23.12 says, Apply your heart to instruction and your ear to words of knowledge. We are to not only be learners, but we are to learn to listen. We are to learn to listen. Because part of being a good learner is one who pursues knowledge, one who is open to be taught, but also one who develops the discipline of listening, of listening. Hear instruction, the writer of Proverbs says. And by virtue of that, be wise and do not neglect it. And again, apply your ear to words of knowledge. And this is one of the disciplines that is often neglected today uh, when we are in primarily a visual culture. Uh, oftentimes uh, we, can, we, we long to see something as it is presented, uh, but learning to listen is, in fact, a discipline. It is an acquired trait, and the more that we listen with intention, the better listeners we will be. And that's essentially what the Proverbs is emphasizing here. We are to learn to listen and to listen well. Number four, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. We've looked at that already, remember? But it goes on to say, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. For they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. And again, we we see the writer of Proverbs is painting this picture, this visual imagery for us uh, of a a graceful garland for the head, the pendants for the neck, that which is uh, beautiful, that which is honoring, that which is uh, showing us the value of this knowledge. But how was it gained? How was the instruction received? Well, it was received through trustworthy teachers. It was received through trustworthy teachers. In other words, 
we need to readily receive godly instruction from good, solid, trustworthy teachers, but there's also the other side of it that we also need to be careful by whom we are taught. Um, I've said in this class a, a number of times, I'll say it again for this re-recording, is that whenever uh, I'm asked if I have read a book or I'm given a book to read, uh, or I even do this with, with articles, um, I, don't typically, I typically try to avoid blog posts and things of that nature, um, but if I'm, I'm given an, an article to read, uh, what I will typically do is to, or actually not typically, what I will always do is I will look at the author first. Um, I want to know who the author is. I want to know about their background. I want to know why uh, I should be willing to read their book or their article. I want to understand uh, not only their background, but oftentimes look a little bit further into where they're coming from and the perspective that they're writing from. Um, that's why I, I consistently, when people will come to me with Bible questions, um, I find that a lot of confusion comes from people doing Google searches and finding uh, various blogs out on the internet and, and then reading into and, and diving down to, uh, into theological or intellectual rabbit holes that they would have never gone into or trails that they have never gone on to had they rightly researched the person that was writing the article or the book. And, and so uh, that's just an example in my own life is, is I seek first to understand who is writing this book or this article, why should I read it, and if I find that they are not a trustworthy teacher, I'm sorry if you forward the book to me, but I'm just, I got too many books to read. I'm not going to read a book that I don't trust the author. And so we want to trust the teachers, but when we do find a trustworthy teacher, we do want to readily accept the teaching that they provide. In this case, a godly father teaching his son as a trustworthy teacher in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 7 and 9. Number five, Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Now, what's the idea? What's the general idea of that? Obviously, the, the, this is not literal. This is figurative language. Um, the iron sharpens iron. Of course, it does literally, but it's a figurative expression, right? A, another person helps another person be better, be sharper. And so one of the, uh, number five, uh, a way in which we gain this knowledge is through good friends. Good friends. And, you know, I think about the example of, of C.S. Lewis and uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, and I think about uh, what has been written extensively about their friendship and the inklings, uh, if you're familiar with that, and how they would uh, enter into deep discussion and dialogue and debate and think through things. And, and both Lewis and Tolkien both uh, readily admitted how much of an impact one another had on their writing and uh, their perspective in their writing. And, and so also in our gaining of knowledge, a, a good, solid, trustworthy friend can truly help us in our education, our godly education. Number six, Proverbs 4.13, keep hold of instruction as if instruction is personified, right? Keep hold of it. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. And the instruction there, again, is personified, in this case, as a woman, and she is not to be let go. She's to be kept in tight hold. Why? Because she is your life. And the idea there is that the instruction is so incredibly important to our gaining of knowledge and wisdom that we don't want to gain knowledge by virtue of instruction and then it just dissipate. It just fall away. Uh, we, we, we read something and tomorrow we've forgotten it. No, uh, the Proverbs encourages us to, to absorb it to take it in and to take it in internally, uh, as it were, that we might grow. And so we are to preserve or we are to gain knowledge by preservation 
or you might say one of the best ways to gain knowledge is not to lose what you've gained in the first place. And that should be an encouragement to all of us. Uh, One of the things in my own personal walk uh, that has helped me, uh, and it's something that I don't do well at, uh, but that is when I have gained knowledge, godly education, through a a good, solid book, and uh, I am now trying to develop within me the discipline of going back to that book and rereading and then rereading again the same book that I may internalize better and I may remember and I preserve what I have gained from that. Uh, Another great way, and I encourage everyone to do this, is just being in the Word consistently. And I have found in my own life the best way to do that is to be in God's Word every single day. Um, Commit to a plan, a reading plan, Plan and use that plan and read through the year, whether it takes through the, you through the whole Bible in one year or, or some uh, version of that, that's not the point, although I think that's a real benefit. But the main point is, is that be a part of something that puts you in God's Word every single day because the more that you're in God's Word day in and day out, when you don't want to and when you want to, etc., etc., it helps you preserve the instruction that you have received from God's Word. Well, if this is how we gain knowledge, by pursuing knowledge, by being a learner, by learning to listen, by good teachers and good, solid, godly friends, and by by preserving what we have gained, then what are the benefits? What are the benefits of this education? Well, one is... Long life. You probably know what proverb I'm getting ready to read. Proverbs 4.10 Hear my son and accept my words that the years of your life may be many. And Proverbs 10.17 Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. Now, Proverbs 4.10, it says that the years of your life may be many. Now, we need to go back to the very first study that we did in preparations for studying the Proverbs, and we need to remember this. Proverbs are not promises. Uh, So, what this is not saying is that if you uh, gain by instruction, if you gain godly knowledge and you grow in wisdom and understanding, that you're going to live a long life. Guaranteed. No doubt about it. That's a promise you can take to the bank. No, it's not. There are actually godly, God-fearing men and women who die young. That gain great understanding from God's Word and grow in godliness by virtue of fearing the Lord and die in their teens or their twenties or whatever the case is. No, it's not a promise. But it is a truism, and the concept is quite simple, is that living life as God has prescribed, as God has taught us to live, typically, although not always, typically will lead to a long and full life. There's also the side of this from a figurative standpoint, that also a life lived by godly instruction and gaining in that knowledge also leads to a richer and a fuller life, a fullness of life that comes by virtue of wisdom and the instruction in godly knowledge. And so one of the benefits of good education is long life. Number two, Proverbs 4.11 says, I have taught you the way of wisdom. And so one of the benefits, and I know this is a gimme, but one of the benefits of gaining knowledge is wisdom. Internalizing of that knowledge and living it out and applying it within our own life context. Wisdom that God gives through this is one of the great benefits of a good, godly education. Number three, Proverbs 4.11, the second half of that verse, I have led you in the paths 
of uprightness. So to put it in context, let me read to you the full verse now. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. And so number three is uprightness. One of the benefits of godly knowledge, benefits of a godly education that begins with the fear of the Lord is wisdom and uprightness. Living of a righteous life. Really, really. Living a righteous life is a blessing. It's a benefit to you. It's a benefit to everyone around you, I might add, as well. And then Proverbs 9.9 9 says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. Note the connection here, and again, this is lost in our modern culture, but the idea here is that someone who is of upright character, someone who lives a righteous life, not a perfect life, not a life without error or without sin, but one who seeks to live and predominantly living in a righteous way, that righteous person, when given the opportunity to gain godly knowledge and grow in wisdom and understanding, they will. And and part of the idea here is that sin is a stumbling block. Sin is something that prohibits us from growing in our godly knowledge. And oftentimes, again, we don't think of it that way. But if you you think that I, I want to gain knowledge that God provides, I want to do it by virtue of the instruction that He provides, I want to eliminate that which prohibits that learning and that knowledge, and that's sin. Sin keeps us from gaining the knowledge that God seeks for us to have. And then fourthly, Proverbs 4.12 says, When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. And the general idea here, I know using figurative language of walking and stumbling and running and so forth, but the general idea here is that one of the benefits is that you're on the right course. You're on the right course. What gets you off course? Sin. What keeps you from gaining in godly knowledge? Sin. What keeps you on the right course? As the proverb says, the straight path? Well, of course, righteousness, but righteousness encouraging the gaining of godly knowledge leading to wisdom and understanding. And so, what's the value? What is the value of all this? Well, you, you think about the, the commercial that was popular a couple of years ago. Uh, the answer is priceless. The value of a good, godly education, as the Proverbs defines it and describes it, is priceless. Proverbs 8, 10, and 11. Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you desire cannot compare with her. And and note the the words that are inserted here. And again, uh, this is in a poetic sense. What the writer of, of Proverbs is doing is taking these different words of instruction and knowledge and wisdom and inserting them. And we're not to read it like we would diagram a, 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 um, a sentence or to look at it as a mathematical equation. Um, but rather, we're to watch the flow of the poetry and see how that he is figuratively pulling these together to teach us the value of all of it. So listen, take my instruction, that is the gaining of knowledge by the which the means of God's appointment, of instead of silver, something of of value. And knowledge, the gaining of that godly knowledge that begins with the fear of the Lord, rather than choice gold. Again, something of value. No need to compare silver and gold at this point. That's not the point at all. The point is, is that instruction delivers it. Knowledge is what we gain and we take in. And then for wisdom, so now we have the full uh, 
the full flowing from this instruction and this knowledge, all of it coming forward in wisdom is better than jewels. No need to compare jewels and gold and silver. Bah, that's silly. The point is, is that silver's valuable, gold's even more valuable, jewels value. All of this is so valuable. Instruction, knowledge, wisdom. And all that you desire cannot compare with her. That's the point. Not all the different types of valuable things, but the point is is that it's priceless. There's nothing that can compare with the godly knowledge that comes through the means and appointment of God's instruction developed into godly wisdom and understanding. By truth... He says in Proverbs 23, 23, and do not sell it. Buy wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Again, the idea there is not so much, don't get caught up uh, on the, the uh, poetic language of buying. That's not the point. It's, it's the point of acquisition. It's pursuing it. Well, what are we pursuing? We're pursuing truth. That's what we want, right? We want truth. Do not sell it, he says, meaning that it's, it's what? It's priceless. And then, here are those key words again, wisdom, instruction, and and, uh, understanding. All of this, the point is, is that gaining godly education is far more valuable than any of these other things. Well, next week we're going to look uh, more at the fool and the, the fool's response to this, but... Let's conclude with asking, what is the fool's response to education? Which takes us back to how we began the study today. Proverbs 1.7 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So our desire is not to be the fool, not to be foolish, but rather to be open and seeking after the godly knowledge that He provides. Let me pray for us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for this study. And we thank You for Your Word which directs us and teaches us truth. We thank You for Your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who opens our eyes to see the truth of Your Word and teaches us through His indwelling presence. We pray that You would keep us from being the fool, but rather that we would be men and women of godly knowledge, gaining through instruction, gaining wisdom and understanding that we might live for Your glory. And so we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.